So the NBA trade deadline ended today at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Yep. And the total amount of change, trades that were made today and yesterday in total were 18. So we got a lot of trades that happened. Uh, not a lot of them are very impactful. Uh, we could start with, I think, the the first couple ones that I think mattered the most. Okay. So I, I think number one is the Knicks. Absolutely. Trading for Boyan Bogdanovich Absolutely. and trading for uh, Alec Burks. Uh, the Knicks won the trade deadline. It's, pretty, it's as simple as that. Masterclass. And Leon Rose got to start getting his flowers as one of the best GMs in the Talk. league. He gave Brunson a huge contract that was criticized. In that same offseason, he signed Isaiah Hartenstein, one of the best backup bigs in the league, and he's playing great as a starting center, too. Then you trade for Josh Hart midseason. Who do you give up? You give up Cam Reddish, somebody who hasn't lived up to his billing as a draft pick yet in the league, even though he's playing much better with the Lakers. Then this past offseason... You sign Dante DiVincenzo in the trade de- in the trade deadline before today, you go get OG and Anobi and Precious Achua and Malachi Flynn. And then just today you get Boyan Bogdanovich and Alec Burks. I mean, he's built up this roster top to bottom. And in a league that is in love with star hunting and only going for the big name players, I feel like the Knicks are building a team the right way. And do more things have to go right in order for us to win a championship or get to the finals? Absolutely. But I think we have given ourselves the best chance to do so (laughs) by fulfilling out our roster. And now we have an abundance of spacing. Boyan Bogdanovich is going to come off the bench for us, at least when OG and Anobi gets healthy and Randall. But I love this move specifically because Randall, OG, and Mitch are injured. And now Boyan is in a starting lineup with Brunson, and that's going to keep us afloat in the Eastern Conference until OG heals up and Randall. But having him off the bench with Josh Hart, with Isaiah Hartenstein when we're all healthy, Mm -hmm. I mean, this, we have the most depth in the East probably outside the Celtics. Celtics are number one, but then we're right there at number two. If you go straight depth, I mean, you you guys could go eight, nine D. Boston can't really go that far. And I think that we're the second most dangerous team in the East. I think we're making I'm the conference you. finals I'm pretty pretty easily. I think we're making the conference finals <sighs> pretty easily. I want to get all on board. Yeah. Who, I, realistically, who is the we got Boston? Have to respect Milwaukee. Milwaukee, we, they, they listen. I keep it a stack, bro. They they're, suck. they're looking. That's it. They suck. There's a better chance Milwaukee gets bounced in the first round than makes the ECF. Here's the thing: I don't that, respect Milwaukee. As long as they have Giannis, the game is I have a choker to. outside the first round, okay. and Giannis. We, we'll put the ball on him. If we get OG on him, Christ. he ain't doing nothing. Realistically, I Milwoukee and the Pacers playing the first round, bro, mm-hmm. that's that's nasty for Milwaukee. You I don't have trust OG them. and then Mitch on the back. Giannis ain't doing nothing, yeah. bro. Again, you have to pray Stop that playing. Mitch comes back. You do have to pray he's that play, he's, he's coming back. For 100%. Sure. Even yeah, if he doesn't play, back. I still think the Knicks He's ramping up to get on the court All right, soon. I love to hear that because obviously you know the impact that he has on the defensive side of the ball. And then you have Isaiah Hardenstein who's been giving you excellent minutes, subbing in as a That's starter. Awesome. You bring him back to the bench. I mean, either which way. You're going to be set in that regard. I want to go all in on, on the Knicks. I just need to know what version of Julius Randle I'm getting come playoff time. You have all the depth. You're right. You can get excited. It's justified. This team is legit. It's just a matter of that star power. I understand what you're saying. You guys did it the right way. I agree. I think Jalen Brunson is a star in his own right. You do have a star. But going up against Giannis, going up against Dame, I think that it'll be a harder task come playoff time. We've seen that you guys can go into a series, be underdogs against the Cleveland Cavaliers, and smoke them. You guys have done that. You've shown the capability to do that. But you need Julius Randle to be at 100 and playing at 100 against a team like that. Boston Celtics definitely would be number one for me. But you guys definitely have made some unbelievable moves. OG Ananobi getting surgery. I think they said three weeks until he's reevaluated. Bittersweet, of course, because you guys were rolling with him on the court. Julius Randle, of course, has the dislocated shoulder. But once this team is back, I'm with you. This is a team that can contend. To, to make the Eastern Conference Finals. It's just the Eastern Conference becomes such a, a crapshoot this time of year. With Philadelphia without Joel Embiid, that's another team that you're looking at at a, at a little bit of a disadvantage, although they did make some moves themselves today. I like the Knicks. I just don't know if I can just firmly stamp ECF where we currently stand right now. 
because I understand how how things go. People don't treat the regular season the right way. We haven't been seeing the Heat play that great of basketball, but we know come playoff time, suddenly, somehow, they're going to be playing some high-level basketball. That's just the way that the wind goes with the Miami Heat. And the Indiana Pacers, they've also made some moves. They haven't been playing that that, that great concisively. But Tyrese Halliburton, you see the way that Pascal Siakam has been playing <laughs> since joining. The Pacers before the Cavs. I don't know why he did yeah, that. And I and I didn't. Crazy. It's a fact that I completely overlooked the Cuban Cavaliers, who have been the surprise team of the Eastern Conference, right next to the to the Knicks, for the fact of you you lost Garland, you lost Mobley. Donovan Mitchell has been playing at a top five level in the league in terms of MVP. He's really been that great. I think Riv would take it a step further with Donovan, and that's fine with me. The Cavs have been an elite team this season. It's not the same team as last year. With all due respect, I think the Knicks are better than those teams. I'm only fearful of the Celtics because of the talent. I think the, the I think the Cavs could Cavs be in that conversation, legit. but the Bucks and Sixers, we had these expectations coming into the season, but we have a 50-game sample size now. My preseason expectations for these teams are out the window. Sixers are, are one thing because you have the Embiid injury. It's, a fact. it's really hard to think he's going to be 100% healthy for the playoffs. He's going to be reevaluated in a month, but it still seems like a long shot. We were talking on the previous episode. We think he should just sit out, get his body 100% right for the long term. And the Bucks, I mean, this went on this five-game road trip. They lost four out of five. They had that really terrible game against the Jazz. They get outscored 40-13 to 13 in the fourth quarter. They lose to the Trailblazers. I mean, uh, they lost to the, the Suns last night or the night before. They didn't have um, Dame in that game, but... To me, the, the Bucks aren't contenders. Like I don't see a world where the Bucks are going to be able to, to make a finals run. They're defensively, they lack a lot of juice. I know this picked up Bat, Pat Bev as kind of a POA defender, and I think in a matchup against the Knicks, that's helpful. Going up against Jalen Brunson, going up against the Celtics when your primary scorers are all six six and taller, it, that doesn't really help you a ton. But the Knicks won this trade deadline, picking up Bogdanovich, picking up Alec Burks. Both have been phenomenal for the Pistons. Really the couple of bright spot bets that they've had this season. And you mentioned it, how it isn't been star power driven for the Knicks. And this is something that we have to kind of keep track of going forward because with the new CBA and the second apron, you kind of have two ways of building a team. You could go crazy like the Phoenix Suns, get three superstars, pay them all the max money and sign minimum guys around them and try to figure it out. Or you go the Knicks route where, to be fair, you sign Jalen Brun- Jalen Brunson at a, you know, kind of below star level and he's playing at an MVP level. It's hard to do that, oh, yeah. but then fit everyone else around him. You know, OG's not making a ton. Randall, uh, Dante DiVincenzo is looking like one of the better contracts in the NBA the way he's been playing this past month. So you're figuring out around the edges how to build a team together and they play together and they play with, with defense and toughness and they've been hitting threes. So the Knicks are, are building it in maybe a new kind of fashion that we haven't seen in the past because although the Nuggets did win with Nikola Jokic, it's not like they had that second superstar free agent they went and spent $30, $40 million on like KD with the Warriors, for example. Um, But they're building it with Leon Rose, you know, hitting on some draft picks, accumulating draft picks. Now you didn't, you you got all of these players having up a first round draft pick. Still, you have a boatload of assets to use in the future and you have key contributors who could play defense, who could (laughs) shoot, The Knicks, to me, I said this, I think, two weeks ago. They're the second-best team in the East. The Cavs, the way they're playing, deserve their respect. But I know you said it's a different team from last year. It's hard for me to get that first-round matchup of last year between the Knicks and Cavs, especially the way the Knicks are playing this season, which is better than last year. Oh, you know. Why'd you grunt like that? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of like his signature thing before he talks. Loki, Loki. Loki. Um, I think the Knicks definitely won the day. You know, and I, I... it's interesting because a lot of people, Bogdanovich, Alec Burke, great role players, definitely are going to fit next to Brunson. And the team was already performing at a high level with OG. You know, you can't wait to get Mitch Robinson back because defensively, they're going to be a great unit, especially with Tom Thibodeau. He always, at minimum, produces a great defensive team. So now you got the pieces, you got the glue. Brunson's been playing like an MVP this year. You know, it's really with this team. It's just about Randall. I think everything, you know, you can put all the good pieces together, which they've done that. You know, they brought in shooting. They brought in bench pieces with Dante DiVincenzo last offseason. They brought in all the necessary pieces. They brought in Isaiah Hartenstein as a backup big who's been playing great as a starter but also can be your backup. So they have everything. It's just about, like I mentioned, that second star. Can that second star come in? Can he, you know, change the narrative? He can. This is definitely a team. Excuse me, that's scary. But I I can't count out the Cavs. You know, I think the Cavs, the Bucks. The Knicks, they're probably in that same next tier up. I think Boston is the favorites in the East. You know, I don't think any of those teams should be fearful of each other. You know, I think Joel's saying, I'm not fe- I'm not scared of any of those teams. He shouldn't be. You know, and I think the same could be said for Cavs. Same, 
same that can be said for Milwaukee. I don't think any of these teams should fear each other. You know, they've all had their weaknesses. With the Bucks, though, you still got to trust in Giannis and Dame. With the Cavs, with the way they're playing, the way their role players have stepped up, the the, the continuity they have. You know, you got to trust in this year that J.B. Bickerstaff has created a different environment for, for them sure. this year. Donovan Mitchell has been playing like a top five MVP candidate this year. But also on the Knicks side, you know, bringing in these two guys, you have Dante. You didn't give up much. You know, Quentin Grimes wasn't playing great in his role with them anyways, and Dante has been playing excellent. You know, and then on top of that, you have OG, who's been one of the best defenders in the league. You have a Hartenstein and Mitch combination at center when they come back. It just really puts more pressure on Julius Randle to come out and perform in the playoffs because if he doesn't perform, this team could, you know, not make the Eastern Conference Finals. But I think this time around he's going to perform. Off it, blind faith? No. Has to be. No. Off of He's playing objectivity. <laughs> the smile and the, gets the reason, me. The <laughs> reason why. And, and first off, before I say what I'm going to say about Julius Randle, I just want to bring up that it wasn't too long ago where we did. Gillian Hayes got released. I know. That's yeah. a W. Fuck. You just found that out? Or no, I just realized. Like five it's hours about ago. time. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> it happened like so long. Yo, <laughs> and James Bucknight. Yeah. Kai Jones and, yeah, and Book Nine in the same draft. Oh, I don't, I don't God really bless. care about that guy. But James. I remember we did a show with Hoop Politics. It was like a, a through stream yard, something like that. Shout out Hoop. And I remember you guys were laughing at me for owning the Julius Randle jersey. And now What is it? You got the nasty award for that, right? That's yeah, I got the nasty <laughs> award. And now all the players that you guys were hounding me for not getting the jerseys, they're off the team. You know, RJ Bear's off the team. Manuel Quickly's off the team. And I like that we're going into this direction. Where's your Brunson jersey? I got to get one soon. I definitely got to get one We can get soon. matching ones. Okay. I, I could. What color are you going to get, though? Whichever one you don't get. I'll give you first dibs. What do you mean? If we're getting matching ones, don't we get the same one? Oh, okay. Well, heard, Respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's do it. I only yeah, meant yeah. that he gets, <laughs> we both get Brunson jerseys. So okay. I mean, He's right, though. I don't like getting white jerseys. I, you know what? I just feel like it's too... Get it's stains. Too, yeah, it's, shit, like, yeah. it's just like, bro, I want some color. I get it. The you're white... Cooking. You're right. The they, throwback Nick ones, uh, yeah, like blue and this, orange. Yeah, facts. I would get a blue one. It's just the white jerseys to me... Like, Look, white jersey Nick's right there. It's beautiful. It's clean. It's clean. But I, I like understand what you're the saying. The dark blue one. I the like, dark blue one's you know, beautiful. Of course, the away jersey. The I orange like one's he too. Don't they have an orange jersey? Julius Randle's going to play better because you look at the other playoff series that he's been a part of. The first one against That's Atlanta, they were swarming him. We didn't have no spacing. He was missing shots on his own, of course, but he didn't. He wasn't playing with proper spacing. The only other player that performed in that playoff series for us was Derrick Rose and Alec Burks. This past playoff run, he was playing hurt. He was injured. He had some good games and it sprinkled in. It wasn't entirely bad. And in the games that he was bad, it, the same reoccurring problem was there. We didn't have much space in. And outside of Jalen Brunson, nobody else really showed up consistently. R.J. Barrett has some games, but Emmanuel quickly didn't play well. Josh Hart's shooting was all over the place. Now that we have the proper shooting around Julius Randle, I think he's going to be a much better offensive player, and I think the way he's been playing this year, getting downhill more, is going to lead to him being more efficient in the playoffs. And I think right now what the Knicks are doing is that we have a roster full of winning players. You know, Jalen Brunson's a winning player. For sure. Defense Chance is a winning player. You know, Look back to this Villanova run when they won a championship. He's a winning player, and he plays like that. OG Ananobi, winning player. Um Bojan Bogdanovic, not too long ago, I was I, I remember watching him on the Jazz versus the Clippers, and he was playing great defense on Kawhi Leonard, and he was doing his thing offensively. He's a winning player. We got a ton of experience and a ton of guys that will take the load off of Julius Randle to the point that he doesn't have to feel like it's all on him for us to go far. Mm -hmm. I think that Julius Randle can play at an average level, and we can still make the conference finals. I actually believe that. The only way we make the finals if he is is if he plays well. I think we can make the East Conference Finals with him not playing that well. Honestly, mm. I think what's, in order for us to go to the finals, well? he got to play really well. I mean, if he gives you what he did last season or you know the previous two playoff runs, yeah, it's gonna be tough. If he gives us what he gave us last playoff run, I think we can make the Conference Finals still because I think we have Boyan and we got a lot a lot of other players that can step up. Okay. Are you guys gonna beat the Heat? I think we will. There's something wrong. Yeah, it really just takes. I'm not even trying to say this disrespectfully. Just takes one time for the heat to fizzle That's out. All, I need okay. to fizzle out one time in the first round. Be like, told y'all, they, they ain't like that. You still gotta acknowledge the Bucks. You have to. Yeah. You do. Now nah, it's and the Cavaliers are actually really. Randall, Randall good. needs to play 
like average Julius Randle. He doesn't need to be yeah. the superstar, you know, crazy number two option, but he can't go out and give you what he did last year. That's going to be hard to make the UCF. Am I crazy for saying this is the best Donovan Mitchell we've seen? No, Outside is, of playoff this is, Donovan? This is the best this Donovan is, yeah, Mitchell for sure. we've seen. In a regular season, yeah. Because my Lord have mercy. He's, Garland went down, and I don't want to say that this was the best thing for him, but I feel like he found himself within this offense. But, of course, Garland's come back has still allowed Mitchell to still be that guy. And kudos to Garland, honestly, for allowing himself to take a back seat where last year there was a, you knew Donovan was the guy, but of course Garland with his opportunity is still trying to get his. But he's really come back and realized, hey, we have to keep riding this hot hand. You see the way that Jared Allen has, has been playing this season. Evan Mobley coming back. Obviously, that's going to help your defense. Okoro, which I, I brought up to Riv because, hey, I got to give him his respect. He's moved to the bench. And it's really allowed him to thrive in that role where Max Struess is now the starting three. I, I this is a really good roster. That that, good Cav, that Cavaliers team is a legit one, not one that I want to overlook. These are the first four trades that happened uh, just within the last forty eight hours. So the first trade was the Timberwolves got Monte Morris and the Pistons dope. got Shake Milton, Troy Brown, a second round pick. The second trade, the Celtics got Xavier Tillman and the Grizzlies got Lamar Stevens. A second round pick in 2027 via the Hawks. A 2030 second round pick via the Mavs. The third trade, the Pistons got Simone Fontecchio. And the Jazz got Kevin Knox and the draft rights to a player named Gabriel Procida Overseas from the yeah. Turkish League. A 2024 second round pick. And the fourth trade was the Jazz received Kara Lewis, Otto Porter, 2024 first round pick. That was, I think it's the Clippers first round pick. Mm -hmm. And the Raptors received Kelly Olenek and Oshay Agbaji. So we'll go by these trades like four at a time. So just within these first four trades, which one do you like the most? Mm. The Monte Morris one is interesting. Okay. Um, because I definitely think at least regular season wise, they needed some backup PG minutes desperately. We saw with Mike Conley out the lineup when he was injured. And even when he's just off the floor, the offense doesn't look the same. In terms of like a playoff needle mover, is he going to move the needle for me as as I view the Timberwolves? Probably not. But I think for like regular season, these lulls they've had offensively, especially in fourth quarters and tight games, um, I thought that was a solid move for the Wolves. I like it. You know, I think, you know, more is being a game manager and more is being a guy that can hit the three ball and you know, that can be a, a point guard that can facilitate work around the pick and roll, you know, just be a solid playmaker. It's definitely huge because those, those minutes without Conley as the point guard, they, they be rough. You know, you want to see Ant, Ant man and these guys make that improvement, but now bringing in another veteran point guard, somebody who's, you know, has that feel for the point guard position, who knows how to play it. I think that improves mightily for them. You know, like you said, I don't know if it's an insane need a mover in the playoffs, but they needed some backup point guard minutes. And this is a, a guy that they got essentially by trading nothing for him. Yeah. So this was much needed. And I, I liked what they did here. Couple of moves. The Xavier Tillman one obviously makes a lot of sense, especially with the way that Christos, of course, has been going through some injury. You needed that backup outside of uh, almost 40 years old Al Horford. So getting Xavier Tillman to be your backup big there, I always say that's what a lot of teams need. There's, the Lakers are definitely one of those cases where I would have loved to move Should've for an Xavier the first with Drummond. For Tim. I, and that was what I said in the chat. I said the only trade that I would have done was to get Andre Drummond back on the team because we really would have liked that, that backup presence. But... For, for the Boston to go and get Xavier Tillman, I thought that was a smart move. And another one, just low-key, just to, to talk about a little bit. Uh, Utah trading away Fonte Keo. I hope that this means that we're going to start to get some more Taylor Hendricks minutes. There we go. I truly hope. And, it's been cooking and, the G League. Just because last trade deadline, we saw similar where Jazz so made some Sharif moves. Cooper, buddy. Huh? So I Sharif Cooper. Isn't, wasn't that your guy? Not really, yeah, but no. I didn't. I'm, didn't you make a team to get him on 2K? <laughs> yeah, no, I do that all the time. Got it. Never thought he was going to be this high level guy in this league. I thought you called him Trey Young. No, we, me and Joel laughed about somebody calling mm, him Trey Young. Okay, yeah. no, I'm just trolling 100%. I just, couldn't get me on that one. No, no, no. no. Uh, you were very straight, very, uh, very quick with your answer, so I respect Jeez. that. Try to catch you slipping. But. Hopefully this frees up minutes for my guy Taylor Hendricks because, again, last trade deadline, we saw the Jazz make some moves, and then it, saw, it led to Oje Akbaji getting some minutes down the stretch of the season. He actually showed some promise. Uh, and then him getting traded to the Raptors today. I don't know why the Jazz decided to trade him away so soon, uh, but I get it. They have so many pieces. It's never really they the got pick. Exactly. It, that's, that's very true also. But I'm hopeful for Taylor, where obviously he was a top-10 pick. I want to see him get some minutes. I want to see what he's made of. Ah, I thought this was gonna be a, a Fontecchio um, yeah, no kind way. of thing. Come on. Um actually you I will know, I will make agenda. it a Fontecchio kind of All thing. All right, cool. Because I actually think that Detroit needed the him. Pistons did something this trade deadline where they just said, All right, we're just gonna get like good NBA players and 
at least Both serviceable guys. They traded away Alec Burks and Bojan. That was that's why it's they, a tough they look. They got Quentin Grimes though. Was, they did get Grimes. Grimes was dope. That's a good point. This is going to sound a little bit crazy, but. I, I think Boyan much, much better, but Fontecchio fills his role. Understand. As a shooter, movement shooter, and he's actually a really good defender. He's been an awesome defender this year. So Fontecchio going there, I think he can be in a star lineup for them, and it's going to give them more spacing. Quinn Grimes was a good pickup. Shake Milton hasn't done much with the Wolves, but I think in a in a space where he has freedom, he can play well. Mm-hmm. Although I don't know if he'll play over Marcus Sasser. That's the decision that Monty Williams will make. And I like Troy Brown Jr., you know, just a 3-and-D wing who can space the floor somewhat. Love I think Troy. the Pistons, uh, even though they Excellent. lost Boyan and Alec Burks, they might have gotten a little bit better with mm. this trade deadline with who they got. Listen, don't look now. Pistons, 3-and-4 in the last seven. For, for where they were and when they, they lost the 30 in a row. Oh, they, yeah, they, they beat the, the Kings. The Thunder, too, yeah. if you know, last the Kings week. know I just rode for them? The the Kings do have some bad losses. They do. they do. They do. And then with the Raptors, I don't know why people were overreacting to what the Raptors did. I think Kelly Olenek is a, is a really good player. He fits with uh, Scotty He's Barnes Canadian. and his development. Yeah, he is Canadian he is. too. And O'Shea Igbaji is Canadian. Solid. No, it's he's not. Okay, trading Olenek. first. I, whose first was that? Do you Clip, have it was the Clippers said. first. So it's going to be okay. a late. It's, right. it's still a first round pick, yeah. but it's the least. Uh, it was least like them, favorable. OKC. Yeah, there's like four teams yeah, on that protection. I think Minnesota. Olenek is a free agent after this year. Yeah, that's the pick that they got from the Pacers. Could you remember with the Pacers, uh, they when they traded for Pascal Siakam, they gave him that pick that was the like you just mentioned the the Rockets, OKC, the Clippers, and mm. one other team. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that might have been something. It might have yeah. been in. It's probably been within that deal. All I, I know is that this pick is not an early first round pick, and this and this draft is weak. So you know the the odds of a, a good player being available in the late twenties in the first round, it's not likely. And Monte Morris, of course, Raptors he, could draft though. Monte Morris has never averaged a turnover in his career, over a turnover in his career. That's pretty crazy. And I think with the Timberwolves turnover problems, with their spacing problems, he provides two areas of what they need. And now they have a point guard they could go to when Mike Conley's not on the floor. So I think that makes them better. You know, sure. and, and I'll stay on topic about the Toronto Raptors. Remember how we were talking on our last basketball podcast, how this team should be centered around Scotty Barnes, and that's what their goal should be mm-hmm. at the end of the season. Kind of saw that today with trading Dennis Schroeder, getting a guard out of there who Dennis Schroeder does have some ball handling responsibilities on the squad. Now you trade him. You trade for Spencer Dinwiddie, who most likely is going to hit the open market, I can only assume. So now it's really being emphasized. Scotty should, of course, with alongside Emmanuel quickly. These are going to be our two primary ball handlers. Dennis Schroeder, who's been playing well for Toronto Raptors. At least you, you, you traded him. Maybe I don't know if there was picks involved. I think it was straight up Schroeder. Just straight, for the two players, was, Dennis yeah, Schroeder, yeah. Dennis Young. I would have liked to see a pick there, maybe a second rounder. But at the same time, what you tried to do was center your team around Scotty Barnes. And they started the process a little bit earlier than what me and Joel had anticipated, which we thought would be this Basically, just to get, it was basically off Schroeder's contract. That's mm-hmm. it. Well, what, it was, how it, much it, was he it, getting paid? It wasn't a lot, but they had committed to him and Young for another year or two, Thaddeus Young. And Dinwiddie, they're just going to, you know, I think buy out or let him go in free agency, they, which is going to be interesting. Dinwiddie was owed, I think, three and a half million if he played, like, a few more games. And Two Din- for 25. Yeah. That was his deal. And, which is good. Yeah. It's a good deal. And Dinwiddie being a guy at the buyout market is an interesting one because he, he's still yeah. a, a solid player given in the right role. But like you mentioned, there's a lot of teams under the tax apron that aren't going to be allowed to to mm-hmm. sign yeah. him in the buyout market. The Suns o- being one of them. Oshak Baji and uh, Grady Dick on the same team now. Dope. They yeah. played together. Yeah, in Kansas. Fire. So I mentioned it. Trades five through seven. Uh, the Pacers got Marcus Morris, Cork Moss, three second round picks. The Sixers got Buddy Heald. Ooh. The Thunder got Gordon Hayward. The Hornets got Trey Mann, Davis Bertans, Mike Kick, Draft Comp. And then the other trade was uh, the Pistons getting Daniel House, who's likely getting bought out. And we'll see where he lands on a buyout market. Gordon Hayward, what do you think about him to the Thunder? They needed some veteranship. They go and they get Gordon. The only concern, of course, which has always been a concern with Gordon, is going to be a matter of help. But he's going to help the young guys, of course. I think that that was a solid addition, especially for the price tag of what you got him. Definitely not a bad deal. We talked about Bertans being included in every package just to make contracts work. But then on the opposite side, I think you tweeted this or you texted us about Trey Mann getting some opportunity now in, in Charlotte. That's going to be huge for his development. But at the end of the day... That could be a dangerous thing, too. Charlotte don't do shit, man. 
it's kind of true, which is why I'm kind of skeptical like of another move there. that we're going to talk about a little bit Trade later. Man. Let me not get ahead of myself. But Oklahoma City wanted to, we thought that they'd get some veteran in there. They brought in Gordon Hayward. If he stays healthy, great move for them. Yeah, that's solid. Um, I don't know if they're going to... I think Gordon Hayward should close with his lineup. You know, that yeah, which redacted, means you're sitting... Uh, uh, Torture? Yeah, redacted. No, no, no. no. The say, other guy. The other dude that we don't talk about. Got it. Yeah, yeah. His ass should be redacted. Uh, he should be on the bench. I think this is a really good move. It's it's weird because we've been talking coming up to this trade deadline how the Thunder need like some size, some interior presence, rim protection, and that's not really the move they made, but Gordon Hayward makes them better. You know, being able to have some more spacing out there, he could play make some, he could put the ball on the floor some. He overall, I think, just upgrades this team, especially when you see the deficiencies of Josh Giddy, especially offensively. There, there's really just not much he could do, especially when he doesn't have the ball in his hands. I mean, you see constantly defenses are just saying, Giddy, you could just sit in a corner or sit on the three-point line. We're just going to guard four on five. So being able to have more spacing on the team too, I think it's a really good move for the Thunder. I think this is one of those moves where it's like, it's not what you really needed, but it definitely makes you better. You know, it doesn't make you worse. I think Gordon Haywood's still a good player. You know, I think he's a guy who can, you know, work well in the playmaking department, can space the floor, can get to the rim, you know. And he once you once, like like you said, he provides good veteranship experience, mm-hmm. you know. And he's got some ma- playoff experience. Yeah, maybe if Giddy's not in the lineup, you can plug in a Gordon Haywood or whatever. Like, he's just a guy that's going to make your team better and not make your team uh, worse. The Buddy Hill move. Intrigues me. Oh, yeah. yeah 40% from the three-point line, 16 points a game. The Sixers but, had a weird deadline. Yeah, they did. But it was like they didn't give up much. Like, they they gave up a, a lot of second-round picks. It was three, if I'm not mistaken. Three. But in terms of just players, you know, they did just get Morris to Keys, which was nuts, and then they traded him. <laughs> um, so he and then no he got longer, traded again. Yeah, it was crazy. But bringing in Buddy Hield, you know, a guy who his contract is up this year. So you don't know if you're going to pay him. But I think they're gearing for Embiid return because this is a move that I signals that for me. You know, you bring in Buddy Hill to help this team out offensively even more. And I think if Embiid is going to return, this is a guy that could become really dangerous Hell in yeah. the playoff series. The uh, Sixers now for 2024-2025, Embiid is the only person under contract. Or the only one with guaranteed money. They have Paul Reed. For yeah, like they'll pay some, Maxi. Um, of course, you have Maxi. Yeah, Tobias, who knows they bring back. But I say it's a weird free age or trade deadline for the Sixers because we don't know about Joel Embiid. That's number one. They go out and get Buddy Heald. I bet. And then consequently, a couple of hours later, they trade Patrick Beverly. Yeah. I'm looking at this backcourt of Tyrese Maxey and Buddy Heald. They're going to get picked on. Defensively, yeah. I mean, that's but a offensively. really... <sighs> offensively, it's great. It's phenomenal. Buddy Heald could shoot the piss out of the ball, but one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA, period, since he's entered the is league. Maxie a we know We know how great Maxey is offensively, too. Fair. Defensively, I worry. You know, you just got rid of... Patrick Beverly. They also traded Jaden Springer to the Celtics, who had some good minutes last night yep. against the Warriors. Defensively, with Nick Nurse, he's obviously you know a good mind. He has different schemes that he could throw at opposing offenses. They might be getting Kyle Lowry. Okay, that's, no, just, that's, yeah. that's nice, but it's just defensively as a bench player. That's defensively, not a bad move. this backcourt worries me. It's yeah. great you got some more shooting, and you need him to come back, but. I don't know. It, it was a weird. It was a weird deadline for the 76ers because I just don't know what direction they're going in. Are they trying to compete for this season? If that's the case, I would like to have a couple defensive pieces that but it's still, I could it, use as chess pieces. It still keeps your uh, options open in the off season to get a star. It does. Buddy Hield, just like Marcus Morris and them, he had an expiring contract anyway. So if it doesn't work, you still have that money at the end of the year to go get somebody else. I think Buddy Hield was a great addition, regardless if Embiid comes back or not. Because I think with him, they at least stay afloat, and they're a better team, and they have better shooting. What but uh, I, they can I, the 6-7 seed so quick. I just don't think that there are much of a threat this year, and I don't think that this move is really Even a move. Even with Embiid? To, Embiid's going to be hurt when he comes back. It's going to it's gonna take some time to come back from that meniscus and Pleasant surprise. Really trust it. Four weeks until he's reevaluated. Re- re-evaluated. That's what I agree. But reevaluated. That's word. That's true. <laughs> but I was expecting a lot further along the line. That's true. One month and then we see where he is in his process. I was optimistic but that, after hearing that. That also tells us that they're going with a short-term approach here. True. That they're not shutting him down for the season or anything like that, which puts in some more implications about his playoff time. Fair concerns. I think it's uh, over for MB this year. I do. You know, I, I don't know if he's going to not play. Yeah. But I think that given his injury, if he rushes it, he's going to be playing at maybe 60%. Yeah. And that's not good enough to get out the East. And he's going to risk his health long term for, you know, a team that they have talent, but I don't know if they're an overwhelming favorite. He's just, and they crazy. need him to be at 100% yeah. to make a deep playoff run. So the Buddy Heald move to me, 
if Embiid was fully healthy, I would have loved it. But the fact that I think there are question marks around his health, this is just not a move that to me, I'm like, okay, now I look at the Sixers and I view them differently Mm -hmm. because I I just don't think we're seeing a healthy Embiid this year at any point. Thunder is a great move. Gordon Hayward has been an underrated player for a while. Uh, He's a do-it-all forward. He can defend. He can shoot. He can handle the ball. He can pass it. He's a smart player. He now fits with OKC. I would have liked OKC to get a backup big. Yep. They need to get better at rebounding the ball. But Gordon Hayward now takes the spot that Josh Giddy now employs. And in the playoffs, I think when they thin out the rotation, Gordon Hayward will get that spot. And Agreed. you'll have Isaiah Joe playing with Kaysen Wallace. And Giddy might get iced out. Because what Giddy does best right now is he is a, he is a great entry passer. That's what he is. He's a great entry passer. But Gordon Hayward is a plus passer too. And now they have a wing that can do a little bit of everything. You know, I was actually thinking about it because... Six for six from three. Oh, God. Oh, we my needed that. God. <laughs> Last night was bad. We needed that. Yeah, we yeah, need, yeah. yeah, we needed that. My thing about trading for the backup big is the best big that was traded today was Daniel Gafford. He was the best big that was traded today. And I say that with the idea of teams understand how valuable it is to have that bench big. Like and the they're not going to be willing to... No, he's cooking. Against who? I'm sorry. He said like the Bulls. He's cooking for time, sure. Though. Most for that most, playoff most push, definitely. Yeah, that's what they said. It's coming. <laughs> I, I, I for the playing that, push. That, that will, eight seed, man. That I will looks say, real good, man. Kenny dropped a video he's today done. already talking about the Chicago Bulls, and he's 100 percent right. The fact you guys made zero moves today is mind 2021. It's mind boggling to me. It makes no sense. You guys continue to I have haven't zero made a trade direction. in 30 months, including I, I, a player. I don't understand. <laughs> is the last trade since 2021? They said 30 months since 2021. We have not made. Was the last trade Vooch? Including a player. I think so. I think you guys realize how bad you fucked up and said, we can't do this again. That's a terrible mindset. No, I'm just being a prick. I'm just being a prick. I'm just joking. I'm joking. But it's like, they don't joke. Everybody should have been gone. I ain't even going to cap. Really bad. Everybody should have been gone. But but. part of it is probably like, we made this trade for Vooch. How do we just go and rebuild a year later when we just trade these assets and young players? I just say in mind with with getting back to, to the conversation with OKC is, there's not many teams that are willing to make their backup bigs available, and, mm-hmm. and there's not going to be a team that's going to be willing to to overpay. Where I think the Mavs even giving up a first, I understand it because they de- they definitely need some help. We're going to talk about that one a little bit later. But again, there weren't there weren't many available, and the fact that Gafford was the best one that was traded today really speaks to how valuable these bigs are in the league. I mean, you're right. At the right price, you got that's where the offer comes from. Yeah. But OKC has like. A lot of assets. 20, 30 first round picks. Mm-hmm. Like, I would have just gave be... up two for Drummond pretty easily. Two? Yes. I don't know. I can't Ooh, do that. Two is a little, oh, maybe I, a first and a second. Especially because if I'm OKC, I still stand packed. See how far I go with my young yep, squad yep. this season. Adjust in the offseason when you can potentially make that power move for. I don't want to get crazy here, but there's speculation of Donovan Mitchell getting traded. Imagine OKC? they made that move. My point being, they my have Lord. a bunch of assets. They have that 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 How flexibility. They have that flexibility Ironic. if they don't go on this run that they're expecting. Of course, they are young. Oh, no, but no, don't rush a move. OD. Don't the thing rush about a move. Is that two first round picks? They still have like fifteen left. 